In this video, I wanna talk about what happens when your N8N workflow breaks, because it happens all the time. Like, especially when you're building a new workflow, you know, you're, you may be building it out and you're filling stuff in and maybe a, your structured output parser doesn't quite work right. Or maybe you didn't hook something up right and so data is not processing the way you want it to. Or maybe you have something in production and then something went wrong. Well, first I wanna show you how to be able to figure out you know, where and how it went wrong. And then we'll talk about a little bit about how you might be able to fix it. So here we are, we're in N8N. I'm just on an overview. I've clicked on execution. So we see all of my various processes that I run. And then we see, we just come down here and error. Boom, we see some errors. This one was not working. And you see it's, it's this one workflow that I'm working on over and over and over again. That's because I was testing a new flow. And so stuff would sometimes break. Let's come in here. Let's just check out what happened here really quick. And so we just click on it. It's going to open up the exact execution of that bot that ran and what went wrong with it. So here we have uh, what's honestly a pretty simple workflow. I have a webhook uh, trigger. It goes into an AI agent and then I have a code node. And we see error down here. It tells me the timestamp that it happened. So if you have a production um, ready workflow that's live, that's actually going and something broke, thankfully you're able to identify when it broke. Um, and what I would recommend, and I'm gonna hit uh, debug and editor really quick just so we can come in here. Um, what I would really suggest you do is come up here to the three dots, click on settings for all of your workflows. And this one's still being built, so I don't have it set yet. But you're gonna create, uh, have an error workflow. You're gonna set to the workflow that's live. And so I would have one, I, have, I think I have called a bug report to daily report. So that I would just set it to that. And then um, it every single day I'm gonna get a report on where all my workflows break, the specific time that it broke. It's gonna give me the name that it broke. Um, and I have that available in my free school community. If you want that bug report uh, workflow, you just click the link below, you'll be able to get that right away. Um, either way, so here's the workflow that broke. We see that there is an error and it even tells me the issue. It cannot read the properties of undefined. So what that tells me is my code node broke because something wasn't being passed through, right? Now, I only know that because I've seen enough errors that I'm starting to slowly realize what each of these is. Um, but I'm gonna show you what I did when I was first learning this because I do not know how to code. All of this code was written by ChatGPT. Like I, I don't, I wouldn't know how to do any of this. And I, I like even after months and months of doing this, I still have no idea of actually how to do any of this coding. I use ChatGPT. And so um, before I get into that, I, I, I wanna just kind of really make sure I hammer this home. When you're trying to figure out what went wrong in your workflows, and which one did I grab? Like that one. When you're trying to figure out what's going wrong in your workflows, N8N is really good at telling you where it broke. All right. And so here we just kind of have our executions. And these are all of the executions of all my, uh, this one workflow right here. If I, if I went back, these are all of the executions of all of my, my live workflows and my non-live workflows as well. So anytime I do a test, um, this, this here tells me that I ran it. It just was a test. So when I click the test workflow button down here, that's how you know that that's was uh, what was what happened. All right. So that's it's not a live one. All these other ones that are white, those are live workflows. So you want to like it's okay to have it red if it's test one, but if it's white, that's not so good. All right. Um, otherwise, in here we see I was testing. I click test workflow. It broke, and it tells me where it broke. Now say I I've opened this up, which I did and I have fixed the code node. I can always come back here, and instead of having to like click the test workflow again, after I've, I've fixed it, I can come here and click this, re, this kind of refresh button, and it gives me two options. The first option is retry with currently saved workflow from the node with the error. I cannot tell you the number of time, the amount of time that that has saved me. And unfortunately, it took me way too long to learn that that even existed. Uh, because I'll, I'll often have workflows that have loop nodes in them. And anytime you test a workflow that has a loop node in it, it has to run through the loop every single time. Even if you're only trying to test the one node that's like right after the loop, you've already got all the data through the loop. If you click just that one node to run, it's going to run the whole loop. But instead, if you do this right here, retry with currently saved workflow from the node with the error, 
it has all the data already. It's only gonna go from that position on. So it's just so awesome that it does that. So I wish I had known this sooner. And then second, the retry from original workflow. And that's is, is you're gonna retry the workflow that broke. Now, I'm not sure why you necessarily might do that. Maybe you would do that if you're, you have like maybe an AI that broke um, because it didn't output the structured output quite right using a structured output uh, parser. And I do have a video about those. I'll put the, that in the link in the description below. Um, but if you wanna see if it breaks again, because sometimes you might have a workflow that, that works and it works and it works and it works. And then it broke like on try number five. And you're like, that's weird, why'd it break? But then on try number six, it works. Um, you can test it over and over again to, to see if it works consistently. And so you just click the, the retry with original workflow. But this one right here, the retry with currently saved workflow, huge lifesaver. I wish I had known about that one earlier. So again, if I had fixed this, I hit save up here, I can come back here and then hit retry. All right. So here I are in my workflow. I got my data from my, my webhook. I got my AI agent that outputs some information. My code node broke. It says, cannot read properties of undefined. So this is what I would do. Because again, I don't know how to code. So I'm just gonna come to ChatGPT. I'm gonna open a new window. I'm gonna come over here to JSON. I'm gonna click this. I'm gonna say, I have a code node that broke in N8N. Here is the inputs that it gets. It gets one, two, three, four, five. Paste one, two, three, four, five. Here is the code one, two, three, four, five. Grab the code, copy, paste one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm putting it. I'm putting it in tildes. That way it, it's set aside so it knows that it's separate. And then here is the error that I got. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I just open this up here, the error details, so that I can give it all the chat GPT. Copy that, paste it in, hit enter, and it's gonna tell me what went wrong. All right, it says it can't read, it's pointing to right here. It means the webhook is likely undefined, or at least does not contain data.data, .data, which is this. All right, and so if we come over here, we open up my webhook, the one that says it broke. It is looking for, what, what was it? We're looking for, um, you should log the structure to understand, okay, uh, there is no dot body and no dot data dot data. So we're looking for a webhook. We have dot body dot data dot data. So I actually do have it. And um, I, th I think I know why it's, it's let's see, body dot data dot data. Um, the error is, is actually probably from an old execution and the code has actually been updated since. And that's why it's actually correct. It's actually correct. The code would run. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain if I, I run it now. Uh, yeah, so it's running now because I've, I have since fixed the issue. Um, and so th that's what I would do. It, it, it ha and that's how I fixed it. Uh, originally, it was not webhook. Uh, now that I remember, it was actually set to just json.body.data.data, and I had to refer back to the webhook. That was the issue. And so um, what it would do is it would, it would tell you that um, this item here, you know, json.body.data.data, is not, is not being found. And well, oh, that's because it's coming from the webhook. I needed to properly uh, set it to the webhook here. So it was web, uh, webhook.item needed added. And once I added that, fixed it right away. But ChatGPT will tell you how to fix your issues. Um, I would say 90% mm, of the time, ChatGPT will help me fix the issue. About 90% of the time. About 10% of the time, ChatGPT just does not have a clue how to fix it. And um, in those situations, you're probably better off doing an online search, uh, maybe even like using Perplexity or using Claude. They might have a better idea of how to fix it. Um, ChatGPT 90% of the time will do it, um, but that, that's how I solve my, my issues. And so that is kind of the process of fixing errors in your workflow. That, that's, there's, you, you figure out where it broke, all right, you find it. In fact, I'll go back, maybe I'll find another one that broke. 
Oh, pizza shop, no, because those all got fixed. Keep going. What other errors do I have? I think those are the only ones I've worked on this week. Let's see. Anything else broke? Pizza shop, pizza shop. No, no, no. All my my all my active ones I've I've fixed, thankfully. Phone call. No, no, no. Okay. I don't think I'm gonna be able to show you anything that I haven't shown you already. But anyway, you you just go in, find the, the, the error. So here, just click in again. Here's my workflow. Just a second. Uh, where are we? Okay, here's my error. This one looks like it's a structured output parser issue. So we come down here. Uh, my agent has structured output parser issue and probably model output does not fit format. So that just tells me, and again, it's because I've seen this enough. This tells me, because the output parser is in red as well, that the model instructions produced something that does not match what I told it it had to match, which is in here. So it says state and cities. Well, it shouldn't be state and cities. It definitely should not be state and cities now. That's kind of weird that it is 16. Yesterday? Yesterday morning? That's not right. Hold on. Check it out in editor. Is it still? No, it's not even there anymore. I, I've changed the whole process. So, um, and I, I changed the process because it broke and I, I had to fix it. So um, that's how you identify your errors. Okay, you come in over here to executions, you find where it broke, you go in, find the node that broke, and then ask ChatGPT how to fix it if you don't know how to code, all right? It usually takes me maybe you know, 10 minutes max, 90% of the time to fix an issue. I might have to ask it twice. So it'll give me a suggestion. I'll go put the code in and then it will break again. I'll give it the error once more and it'll go, oh, well, you actually need to do this. And then the second time I put the code in, it works. It's, it's great. Um, the other 10% of the time, you, you might have to dig in a little bit, find someone somewhere who had the same issue and then fix it that way. But errors in NADN are pretty straightforward. Thankfully, the whole platform is really nice. It identifies what broke so you can try to fix it. Um, and since the internet is just a series of tubes, it's like being a plumber. You just have to clear out the clog until the information is flowing properly. So if you found this video helpful, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like and share the video because it really does help get this information out there to those who need it. And if you want additional helpful N8N tutorials, make sure to join my free school community. The link is in the description below. I have tons of uh, tutorials, how-to videos, a bunch of free workflows. I think it's over 30, maybe 40 different workflows at this point that you can download for free to be able to get started in N8N. Everything from social media posting to generating uh, marketing plans to executive assistance and much more. As always, I'm Bradford Carlton. Let's automate your success together.